happy webinar Wednesday to all of you. I see the chat is getting very active, which is <laughs> always exciting. You know what, Gil? I when I read your uh, comment, hello from a chilled is how I read that gray cordwall, and I was like, oh, that what a fun. Uh, British mannerism, <laughs> but it was actually a typo. So you could have got away with that, Gil, if you would have held out. Well, hello, everybody, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are hailing from. Thank you for being here today. As always, I am so appreciative of your time and that you wanted to spend it with us here at Lulu. So it is Webinar Wednesday here at Lulu. It is also March. If you were not aware, that was shocking to me. Um, how did we get here? It's <laughs> happened very, very quickly. Um, so you can see that I am joined here by Annie Schiffman. So hello, Annie. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. I'm, I'm so happy to be here. I, I love already seeing how the chat is so active. That is great. Uh, I'm excited to chat with you all today. Yes, they never let me down. So yes, tell us where you're from. Tell us how you're doing today. Tell us how your social media game is going. Have you launched a book and was the social media successful? Are you working on a book launch and ramping up your social media? What's your platform of choice? Give us all the information in the chat. Um, and before I turn it over to Annie, I just wanna say you guys have found the chat. Good job. <laughs> There's also a Q&A tab as well. So if you have questions for Annie as her presentation goes on, then please drop those in the Q&A tab and we will take them at the end. Uh, this session will be recorded, so if you have to leave early, you can find it on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, my last note here is uh, a Lulu a Lulu note. Um, so if you are using Wix, if you're familiar with Wix, we just launched an integration with Wix. So if your author website, if your website is powered with Wix, you can now sell your books directly through your own website with Lulu Direct. I will drop a link in uh, in the chat here shortly, but today isn't about that. Today is about before social media, the marketing elements you need before you post. And again, as I said, we're here with Annie Schiffman. Annie is the CEO and founder of Downstage Media and loves helping clients save time using messaging, email marketing, and social media strategy. She is the author of the book, Simple Social Media. She's certified in both MailChimp and StoryBrand. She coaches clients, facilitates meetings, delivers keynotes, and provides done-for-you marketing services with the company she founded, Downstage Media. She has two daughters with Beatles-themed names that she has brainwashed to like musical theater. Annie uses her background in theater and storytelling to amplify her marketing and add a theatrical flair. She shows her clients that all the world's a stage and how to import oh and how important it is to connect with the audience. I will let her do that now. Thank you so much for being with us, Annie. I'll hey, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to be here today. And if uh, so, yeah, I do have two children that have Beatles themed names. Feel free to put those in the chat. Uh, what you guess those names might be. Uh, so feel free to put them in the chat. And the first person who gets them right, I have two daughters, if that helps. Uh, the first person to get one of them right will win a copy of the zine that I put out. And I'm actually going to talk about how I use this as part of my marketing strategy during the course of the presentation. But I will actually get this in the mail to you. So start putting in there some Beatles names that you think that uh, my two daughters may have. And uh, while you're doing that, I'm gonna start sharing the screen. So, all right, here we go. Okay, so this is your marketing checklist. This is what you want to make sure you've got in place before you post and publish. Uh, I see Jude is in the chat, Jojo, Michelle, Eleanor, none of those are correct, but Pam, you are correct with Abby. That is one of my daughter's names. Um, Yellow and Submarine were not names that we named our children, although we were thinking if we had twins, we would name them the White Album, Disc 1 and Disc 2. So uh, let's see here. So Pam, you can, I don't know if there's a way that you can um, send me your information directly. But here, I'll just say, just email Annie at downstage.media. Let me know your mailing address and I will send you the pager zine, which is all about making your marketing so beeping good. Uh, okay. And then we've got Yoko is not correct. Rigby is not correct, although that's adorable. Um, Star and McCarthy, no. 
and McCartney know, um, but I'm going to go back to the presentation and then I'll, I'll check back in to see if anyone gets the other Beatles themed name uh, that we have. So, okay, here is what we are talking about today. This is what you want to have in place before you publish your book or as you are publishing your book and uh, before you fret and before you worry about social media, because here's the deal. Social media is never ending, right? Like it's continuous. It's content that you always have to make. It takes time. It's always changing. And you can often feel like you're not good enough or you're not keeping up, right? So I like to say, start with some other stuff first before you focus on creating that ongoing content. And I'm going to talk to you today about some automated parts of your marketing that you can just have as a really good foundation that you want to focus on first before you hop on that hamster wheel of social media marketing. Okay, Pam, great. You're going to email me your contact info. Excellent. So that's Annie at downstage.media. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Because the question is, is your marketing plan to market your book going to drain your research? resources. And an important resource to keep in mind is not only your budget, but your time. How much time do you have? So you want to ask yourself, is your ad spend getting new customers? Is your website going to convert prospects into buyers? Do your emails get customers to place an order? That's all stuff that you can be planning ahead of time. So we're going to talk about that today if you have that in part of uh, as part of your plan. So here's the idea of why you're going to want to execute this checklist that I'm going to talk about, because it works for you while you sleep. So basically, once you put in the time and the effort to get this stuff together, it will be basically set it and forget it. If you remember the uh, rotisserie chicken that used to be, or the rotisserie grill that used to be on like late night infomercials. Um, what was it called? It was called like set it and for I forget exactly, but that was the idea, right? That you would set it and forget it. Julia, Linda, Lucy, Sky, Molly, all of these are great Beatles themed names. But uh, if you if you give up, let me know and I can uh, tell you what my other daughter's name is. But um. But when you put these marketing elements that I'm going to talk about in place and you automate them, then they will work for you while you sleep. And I have to say, it is really friggin' awesome to wake up in the morning and have emails from Lulu that say that either people have placed orders or that you have a check coming in the mail, all of that stuff. Now, I'm not saying that I just made it in my sleep, right? I set things up ahead of time and I put them in motion. And so then they're automated. But... Uh, it's really nice that I only had to do that once and I did it in the beginning process before I launched my book, Simple Social Media. So that way then I could keep up with all of the social media content or just the other content that I'm just creating, like creating the zine or the blog that I have or things like that. Um, also, when you are able to execute this checklist that we're going to talk about today, it will help you win over clients without sounding so pushy. I know that for authors that you just sort of like want to birth your book, but you don't necessarily want to be like selling it, selling it, selling it all the time. So again, we're going to talk about different things that you can set in place so that way the marketing is doing the selling and you don't have to do as much of it. And so in so doing, it will help you get a much better return on your investment. Uh, so if this sounds good to you, just put yes in the chat. And let's keep it moving. Uh, so my name is Annie Schiffman. I'm the author of the book, Simple Social Media, which I am proud to say is part of Tilt Publishing. I have done it all through Lulu. I use Lulu Direct on my Shopify site um, that I have like sort of worked out with Squarespace. And Lulu has been such a great partner throughout this entire process. So uh, I wrote that book that came out in the fall. I'm the owner of the company Downstage Media. I'm also a story brand certified guide, which basically means I know how to use storytelling elements in marketing, which for people like us who, you know, write books and use a lot of stories in various ways, it's very helpful to us in all the content that we're creating. And then I'm also a MailChimp partner because I recognize that 
uh, you want to make sure that not only do you have a presence on social media, but you want to make sure that you are able to collect those email addresses and then use them wisely. So uh, I'm also a MailChimp partner. Oh, and I also want to tell you a little bit of a story about um, why it's important. I'm going to stop, actually stop uh, sharing my screen for a second. Why it is important. Penny, Michael, you got it. Michael, send me an email, Annie at downstage.media, and I will send you a copy of the Pager Zine so that way you can learn all about different trends that are happening in social media right now. Okay, way to go, Michael. Okay, so um, here's why it's so important to not only focus on social media. When I first got started, um, a little, uh, not quite 10 years ago, I had a client who was a uh, dance school. So I used to only do social media for the performing arts. And uh, this woman was running, um, she was trying to get people to register for fall classes. Great. She didn't have a big budget, fine. And so I said, cool, let's set up some Facebook ads and we will then have them go to your website so that way people can register their children for your dance classes. Great. Cool. So the Facebook ads worked perfectly. She already had a really nice social media following. It was small, but they were really, really engaged. And she had a great social media following. And we can see from the ads that people were clicking on the ads, that they were doing, that the ads were working exactly the way that they were supposed to work. But the problem was because she didn't have other marketing elements in place, and specifically for her, her website was not very well set up. And then she didn't have a way to collect email addresses to then follow up with them or anything like that. She wound up spending her entire marketing budget on this Facebook ad that wound up bringing in zero registrants. It was heartbreaking. And I realized from that point on that I wasn't going to solely focus on social media, that that's just mainly one part or, or that, that that's just merely one part of what you want to make sure that you have in place for your marketing. So I love social media. I love how adroit you could be with putting out new content all the time and you could play with all the new features and you could be chatting with your audience right then and there. But I like to put some other pieces in place first. So let's go through what some of those pieces are. So here is the checklist for you. We're going to talk about a one-liner, a wire-framed website, a lead generator, and an email nurturing campaign, and an email sales campaign. Okay, so those are the parts that you're going to want to have in your, in your sort of marketing arsenal before you start doing that ongoing content like social media. Okay, so let's talk about the one-liner. A one-liner is something that you can very easily use. Many of you here, uh, oh wait, sorry, I need to share my screen again, there we go. Uh, so a one-liner is something that you can use, almost think of it like an elevator pitch, and you can create an elevator pitch for your book, and many of you are most likely going to be promoting your book on podcasts or uh, in other people's newsletters and blogs and even on social media. And so there's so many different ways that people are going to say, tell us a little bit about your book. And so you want to have a very succinct, very easy way of explaining your book. And you want to do that in a way that frames it as being helpful for the person who's hearing it. So you want to talk about the problem that you're solving and then the product or the solution. So in your case, it would be your book and then the result, right? So first I'm going to give you an example of using a one-liner like this for, you know, just for like a regular sort of generic business. This is for like contractors. Then I'm going to show you a one-liner for a book example. So here you go. Most people get stressed out when they think about having to remodel their kitchen. So they never actually do it. That's the problem right there, right? MC Contractors takes the pain out of your remodel project. That is the solution that they're offering. So you get your dream kitchen faster without all the hassle. And that is the result that the, you know, that the buyer gets, right? So let's look at this in terms of how we could do it for a book. So here's the one liner that I came up with for my book, Simple Social Media. Social media marketing is relentless. That is the problem, right? 
With the book, Simple Social Media, small marketing teams will learn how to build a brand with the pager method. So that's the offer and have a presence without the pressure. That's the result, right? So you can, so you want to come up with a one liner for your book. So that way, whenever you are on a podcast and people are asking you about it, or you are in a networking event, or people are just asking you about your book because they get excited, right? Tell me a little bit of, about if you have written a book, uh, is this webinar planned for nonfiction only? So Christopher, I could see what you're asking. Um, I don't think it's for nonfiction only. You could certainly use it for uh, fiction as well, because it's basically the idea is these are all elements that you want to put in place, whether it's nonfiction or fiction. I know that a lot of the books that we're talking about that people oftentimes create with Lulu are nonfiction, I think. Why don't you write in? If you've written a book or you are currently writing a book, just let me know. Is it nonfiction or fiction? Just throw that in the chat so I know. Um, but my book is nonfiction. I don't know if you could tell. <laughs> it's not really the story of a, of, you know, a, of, a, of a business that's going through that. Okay, so and the other element, so a one-liner is one element that you want to have. That's an easy thing that you can write. You can write that today. Take a screenshot of uh, this right here, and you can create your one-liner today. And easily put that as your email signature. You can use that all the time uh, in your in your marketing. Okay, so then the next element is a wireframed website. I'm not going to go through all of the different uh, nitty gritty that you want to have on your website, whether it's Wix or anywhere else. But here are just a few key things that you want to keep in mind with your website. So the first thing is that you want it to pass the grunt test, right? So if you think about if a uh, Neanderthal were to look at your website, would they know within seconds what it is that you offer, how it's going to make their lives better, and how they can get it. It is shocking to me how many people have websites and they don't make it very easy to get the thing that they are offering. So you want to make sure that you do that right off the bat, right at the top. Uh, and so that includes clear calls to action. You want to make sure that people know how to pre-order your book, how to buy your book, how to... Um, uh, you know, how to buy your book in bulk, any of those things, you want to make sure that you make it very, very clear for your audience what to do. Um, then you also want to make it scannable because people aren't reading your websites. They're really just scanning them. So you want to make it very clear to them, including things like section headers. So that way they know exactly what it is what your book is about, how it's going to help them, what problems it solves, have people actually uh, endorsed it, all of that kind of stuff. You want to make sure that you put in your, in your website because when your website is very clear, people will go onto your website and they don't have to reach out to you to bug you about how they can order the book or a little bit more about the book or just things like that. They'll be able to get all of the information that they need right then and there. So here's an example of a of a website that does that. So this is one for e-bikes, but you could see right here, it's sort of telling you what are some of the benefits, how can you get started, and why would you want to get an e-bike like this, right? Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to look back into the chat here. So it looks like we've got some people writing fiction, some people writing nonfiction. Ooh, fiction cookbooks. That's very fun. Uh, fiction, fiction, not okay. So it seems like we have a good a good mix of both. Um, Charles, three collections of short short stories. Way to go, Charles! Proud of you uh, for all that you've gotten. R. Lynn, you've written two nonfiction books with Lulu. Amazing, so great. Okay, so then let's talk about the lead generator, uh, which is a fancy marketing term for a freebie. So with a lead generator, you want to basically offer something for people in exchange for their email address. This is really important when you are marketing a book because it might be that you want to make sure that people know when your book is available for pre-order. Then you might want to make sure that they know when your book is available to order or when your book is uh, marked down, if there's a sale that's going on, or if you have, uh, if you're releasing it as an audiobook or you're releasing the ebook version. If people have raised their hand and said they're interested in learning more about 
you and your work, you owe it to them to let them know. And so a great way to make sure that you can let them know is to have their email address. And a great way to get their email address is with a lead generator. So uh, you are all are writers here. So giving a lead generator an interesting title, something that will uh, captivate them is great. I'm gonna show you an, uh, a couple of lead generators that I've created for my book, Simple Social Media, and how I use that. Also, you want to make sure that what you give away for free is actually good stuff. Like, it's not just sort of the dregs, right? It's not just like, okay, this is something that I can give away for free, so I'll give it away for free. No, it's got to be things that people would actually want and can use, and that make sense, that go hand in hand with your book. Uh, and then also, the lead generator is a great way to qualify your audience. So if they like this, then they're going to like your book. So I know that we've got a lot of uh, authors in here. So I would love to hear from you if you have created a freebie to get people's email addresses. Let's learn from one another. What are the ones that you have used in the past to collect email addresses? Feel free to put those in the chat so we can share and uh, learn from one another. Uh, and so then, yes, finally, the, the last thing that you want to make sure with your lead generator is all designed to get an email address. Okay, so uh, let's break this down a little bit. So here's a very easy lead generator. In five minutes, you will simplify your marketing plan, right? So this is just, you know, you're going to get three five-minute videos that show people how to simplify their marketing plan. Great. This is a great freebie, right? Here's one that I used when I was uh, marketing my book. So my book, Simple Social Media, is oftentimes, uh, or I use a lot of 80s and 90s music references in the book to explain some of the ideas. And as I was writing the book, like the amount of songs that I was using was really getting to be, it was like six, seven, eight, nine. And so I, I decided I would actually create a Spotify playlist with all of the songs that I mentioned in the book and everything from the theme song to Cheers to We're Not Gonna Take It by Twisted Sister to um, I think I have Sabotage in there from the Beastie Boys. Like there's just a ton of music. And so I decided that I would make that a freebie. So that way people would automatically get the vibe that I was going for with the book itself. And this would just be a fun companion that they could have. So, uh, so that, so I called that the pager method mixtape. Mixtape also gave the idea that this is going to be sort of a nostalgia thing. It's going to be a '90s thing, and so I made sure to let people know that they could listen to the, um, they could listen to the playlist. Okay, let's see here. So let's talk. I'm going to look in the chat here to find out what are some of the, uh, what are some of the freebies. Send a photo with you holding the book, and I'll send you a freebie. I'm not sure. Oh, oh, okay, got it, Marcia. So this is after people have bought your book, then they send you a picture with you holding the book and then you send them a freebie. Okay, cool. Um, Noreen says, sign up for my class and get a free PDF of my book that is directly related to the class. There you go. Um, so these almost, I would almost say that they are bonuses. So you have to buy the book in order to get those freebies. But what I would say is think of it maybe the other way around. So before they buy the book, what is a way that you can offer them something so that way they will give you their email address for free? So that's also where, so this is the second, this comes out, the pager zine comes out quarterly. And so this is the one that is out for this quarter. But last quarter when I was launching the book, um, I went through, so with the pager method, each letter of the word pager stands for a different kind of social media content that you want to create. And so I created a zine uh, or an issue of the zine where, um, I would talk about each one of those letters with some kind of 80s or 90s reference, uh, music reference. And so then I also added a QR code here. And I went to a bunch of different live in-person networking events. And so I would give this out. It was just sort of like a fun free gift that they would make. And it totally has this like, you know, 90s nostalgia vibe. There's all these pictures in there. And then people could either A, pre-order the book or B, get access to the playlist. But in order to do that, both of them required me to get their email uh, from them. So, uh, so those are different uh, lead generation lead generators that I had. One was in print with a QR code, and then one was a landing page that I created. Um, crave email building giveaway with other offers. Winner of raffle gets Kindle Seven. 
and book from each participating author, second and third place ebook copies of each author. Christopher, that sounds really awesome. Okay, so yeah, so a giveaway. Great, a, a nice big um, giveaway or sweepstakes, something like that for sure. Okay, so another thing that you wanna have in your marketing mix, again, before you get on that hamster wheel of creating a bunch of social media content, because that's never ending, you can start creating some of this content. So a nurturing campaign, the idea here is that you are going to send your email subscribers helpful bits of information. So these are not really salesy. It's just a reminder that you exist because statistically only about 4% of your Instagram followers are going to see any post that you put out. However, 20% of people actually open your emails and usually it's around 95% of people who you send emails to actually receive them. So in order for you to stay top of mind the same way that you might in your, their social media feeds, you wanna make sure that you're also sending them emails. So it could be things um, that just basically show that you are an expert in that field, whatever your book is about. I see we have a lot of nonfiction authors here. So, you know, so just more, um, even honestly, you could take chapters from your book or sections of your book and you can turn those into emails, just repurpose what you have and turn them into emails. People might think that it's a sneak peek or things like that, um, but it's a valuable way of, you know, using content that you already have. And so the idea here is that with each email, you're going to solve some tiny little problem. You're going to remind people that you exist and you're going to give them some kind of helpful tips. I'm gonna look in the chat now. How many of you have an email list that you're currently building? If you have an email list you're currently building, just put email in the chat. Now then a nurturing campaign is the, oh wait, I'm gonna go back for a second. So here's the thing about a nurturing campaign, uh, which is really great, is that, and I talk about this a lot in the book, Simple Social Media, it's the same idea, which is that you create a whole bunch of emails in batches and then you automate them out. So what I did was one summer, every morning I would write one email and uh, after the month of, at the end of the month of August, I had basically 25 emails, right? So I started like, you know, August 1st and every weekday I would write one email. And so then I had 25 emails by the end of the month. So now I have that on an automated sequence where basically once every two weeks, People get an email from me. I wrote that email a long time ago, but, and I just, just this morning, I got an email from someone today who was like, oh my gosh, love this. I'm totally using it. That's an email that I wrote a very long time ago, but my subscribers are still getting the benefits of, from it. And I'm still getting the benefits of it because they're reminded that I exist. Email, yes. Newsletter, yes. Email, uh, James, email, Stephen. Great, great. Um, if you don't, if you are not yet building an email list, now's the time to start. Okay, so then sales campaigns are a little bit different. These are ones that are intended to get people to actually place an order. So whether it's to pre-order your book, to buy your book. So this could be, uh, you know, after people download your freebie, then maybe there's a series of two or three or four or five emails where it just kind of lets them know some reasons why it would be valuable for them to buy your book. Maybe that there's testimonials or endorsements from thought leaders in the space that make it worth reading, or maybe it's the overall problem that you've noticed, which is a whole reason why you wrote the book to begin with. There's a lot of different things you can put in each one of these emails, and then you create them once and you automate them out. Um, so again, here's why you want to execute this checklist. So once you have all of those things in place, it works for you while you're sleeping or while you're creating other content, social media content, blog content, video content, podcast content. It will help win your clients over without being pushy and it gets you an enormous return on your investment. So you don't wanna just spend another marketing dollar or another marketing minute without having a good solid plan in how you're going to work your marketing. So here's what I want you to do. I have created a marketing report. So you can go to downstage.media slash report, take that assessment, see where you are at, see which of those elements you have in place 
and then you can see what steps you need to take to get them there. And then I'm happy to go through it with you. Normally I charge people $97 for this, but I'm more than happy to go through it with you and help you to get you ready to either launch your book, relaunch your book, or get people excited about the books that you currently already have out there in the world. Okay, so you can go to downstage.media slash report. It's totally free. Uh, so I see that we've got some questions in the Q&A section as well. And then, um, but I'm also happy to answer. Oh yeah, so the question that we have in the Q&A is for Christopher, is this webinar planned for nonfiction only? And I would say no. Uh, I do not think it is only for nonfiction, but I'm happy to open it up for other questions that people may have based on what we uh, talked about today. Uh, go uh, drop your questions in the Q&A for Annie. Go back to the sales campaign list. Oh, sure. Da -da -da -da. Back to the sales campaign. So here's the things that you want to put in there. Um, so you want to solve a problem for your customer. So you want to say like, here's why this book is important to read now. This is a huge problem that is happening. Um, actually here, somebody put in the chat or actually here, I'll look in the chat for some things that people have put out already that you said that your books are about. Um, and we'll use that as an example. Okay. R. Lynn. I've written two nonfiction books with Lulu, what patients want, anecdotes and advice. And my mother has Alzheimer's and my dog has tapeworms, a caregiver's tale. Great. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to take the second one. So um, in a sales email that you might have, so let's say somebody downloads your freebie, then maybe the, you know, the first email that they get is, hey, here's the freebie. And then the second email might be, um, we know, I know how hard it is to be a caregiver. You have to work so hard. You have to give so much of yourself every day to not only take care of your relative who may be ailing, but also all of the other responsibilities that you have day in, day out that you also have to attend to. It is not easy, right? So that whole email could just be about that problem that is in the world that your book is helping to solve, right? Um, and then overcoming an objection. So it might be that, um, you know, that you say, I'm sure that you've probably heard a lot of great advice on how to take care of yourself when you're taking care of other people. But we're going to put this out there that, you know, and, and so then you sort of talk about an, an objections, you know, so, um, but all of that can seem really trite for somebody who hasn't actually been there. I've been there, I know how it feels, and I can help you through, right? That kind of a thing. Um, okay. Uh, okay, the Noreen, the link is working now. You had a cranky internet. I'm glad that your internet is no longer cranky. Um, so Lem, that's another, so that's another email that you could write is one that overcomes an objection. Another one is introduce a uh, paradigm shift. So everyone in the world thinks that this is the way to be a great caretaker. However, in my book, I talk about how that whole idea is flawed. And I look at it from a different perspective. Here's the perspective that you'll get from reading this book, right? So that's the idea of the paradigm shift. And then, of course, you're asking for the sale. You're asking for the sale with very clear, very simple calls to action. Not, you know, get my freebie, buy my book. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, follow me on threads, follow me here. No, 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 no. It's just very one very clear call to action. Buy the book, order the book, pre-order now, any of those things. Um, okay, other questions that you have. Uh, I'm going to, you know what, here, I'm going to actually keep up the slide that has all of the, um, all of the five elements in your marketing? All right. Actually, no, I'll just keep um, keep going with the Q&A. There we go. Here we go. All right. Okay. So, uh, yes. Any other questions that you have? I see. Yeah, I have some questions. And everyone, if you have any other questions for Annie, drop them in the chat. Um, Annie, thank you so much for walking us through this. I love how you pair the email marketing and how much emphasis you put on that because it is so important. And like you said, the ROI, the return on investment that you can get from email is so much more than, than social media in, in many cases. 
Um, so I want to ask, I know that some of you already have an email list, so kudos to you. For those who don't, how do you recommend getting started or are there any tools or platforms you would recommend them checking out? Sure. So um, the first place to just get started is to, um, well, right. So what platforms are you going to use? I find everybody's brain kind of works a little bit differently. So the plat, you know, figure out which platform is going to work for you. Some people really like ConvertKit. It's it's newer on the scene. Um, I've been working with Mailchimp for over ten years, so I really like Mailchimp. I think that there's a lot of great features there. But you're going to want to find out what works best for you, what works best for your budget, what makes the most sense. Um, I think one thing to really look at is. Uh, what does it cost to set up some of those automations, right? So sometimes you can send out one-off emails as much as you like, but there might be a slight upcharge if you're going to put some of those automations in place. So that way, for example, when somebody requests a freebie that the email automatically goes out to them or a series of emails automatically goes out. So I would just look into that pricing wise, but I mean, I'm a, I'm a big MailChimp fan. Um, and then here's some ways to just get people to download your freebie. So one, or, or to download or to build up your email subscriber list. So the freebie is a great way to do that. Uh, I'm going to stop, stop sharing my screen for a second. Sure. Um, the freebie is a great way to do that. You can put the, um, you know, a very clear call to action on the, on your homepage to get people to sign up for it. Um, pop-ups are still very effective. I like to not make them very annoying. Just make it very clear. Like, Hey, you, there's a free thing that you can get if you like. Here you go. Um, you could put it in your email signature, just of your regular emails that you're sending out to people that you offer this thing for free. I also like to, when I'm creating promotional social media posts, which I only do about 20, 25% of the time, having people subscribe to your email list and download your freebie or access whatever your freebie is, is another great way that you can get people to subscribe to your email list. Mm -hmm. So there's a bunch of different ways. Also, just on if you have blog posts or your podcasts, just basically put ads for your own stuff in the content that you're creating. And so instead of having it be like, you know, an ad that you pay for just in the middle of your content, just have a little break and let people know that they can download your freebie. Yeah, one of the best things about having your own website and having that, you know, own versus rented land is you can advertise your own stuff. So in, instead of going to Amazon and saying other readers have bought this, you can do that with your own books and uh, have a little one-two punch there. So Noreen is asking, um, what do you use to send out your emails automatically? She is using MailChimp. So can yep. you talk just a little bit about how to get those workflows set up? Yeah, sure. So the first thing is you just want to create the content itself, right? So um, so if you figure out, okay, I'm going to do, uh, you know, that, that sales email sequence that we talked about, right? Where you solve a problem, you overcome an objective. I, I'm, I'm sorry, you overcome an objection. And then you, um, you know, you sort of flip a paradigm on its head, right? So let's say that you're going to send out three emails plus the one that's like, hey, here's your freebie. So first you write those emails up. And then what you do is you, and I like to use, um, so StoryBrand has a whole lot of templates and things like that. So I use them as part of the like um, business made simple platform. So that, that's where I get a lot of that stuff that I usually use as a jumping off point to just make it really easy. And so I'll write it ahead of time and then I'll set it up with, you know, whatever the platform is I'm using. I use MailChimp mm -hmm. where when someone gets when someone puts in their email address onto the or you know the form say like the form on the website then on the back end sort of behind the scenes i will tag them whatever the name of the freebie is so let's say you know pager method mixtape and then it will trigger the email to go out that says hey we know you requested the pager method mixtape here is the link so you can start rocking right away Right. And so then they'll get that email. And then two days later, they'll get another one that talks about the problem that their book solves. And then a couple of days later, they'll get the email that talks about an objection that it overcomes, things like that. Yes. Amazing. And like you'd mentioned earlier, you can write these things and then they are alive for you know much longer than it took you the time to write them. So even though these things exactly. can seem overwhelming, all these platforms have certain functionalities built right. in to, to help you 
uh, help yourself, if you will. So thank you for that question. You know what, actually, if I could just jump in, because it's really not that much different from, I mean, you all are authors here, right? So it's the same basic idea of why you would take the time to write your book. Because you know down the line, that's going to be a helpful tool for you in your business in some way, shape, mm-hmm. or form. So you've sat down, you've taken all that time to write your non, your fiction cookbooks, to write your nonfiction book about your dog having tapeworms, to do all of that. You've put in that time. And I just say, do the same thing once you're done with, you know, once you have your book written, they, or at least in your marketing time, the time that you set aside to do your marketing, then create that automated email sequence. And then once you're done with that, then start creating your social media content. But this way, the book is done. All of these automations are done. Then you can hop on the the treadmill and start creating your social content. Yes. All right. Speaking of social content, Nicole is asking, what is the secret sauce to get your post in real scene? So I have a very different perspective on social media content than most other people do, which is that I create content for my audience. I don't create content for the algorithm. Mm. So I am not as focused on, and now to answer your question, who, who was it that asked that question? I think Nicole. Nicole. Asking. Okay. So Nicole, I am more than happy. I just attended social media marketing world and I took a thousand notes from people who are doing that kind of thing day in, day out. Um, But here's what I would say is not so much to create content that's going to get your reels seen by people you don't know, but create content that's going to resonate with people you do know. So your prospects, your current clients, create the kind of content that's going to save you time in Like if they were to call you and be like, I don't know the answer to this question, or I don't know how to make this work. Can you help me with this? And then you would walk them through it or you would email them back. Create a reel like that that's helpful for them. So that way, then you can always send them that in the future. Or if they're following you, then they know that you are creating content that's directly related to them and what they need. That's going to help you actually build real relationships with people on social media. You're not going to have as sexy numbers. If you go look at, I mean, I I probably have less followers than all of you do. However, I have a very full pipeline. I have plenty of people buying my book. I, social media is doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing to help me triple my business from last year to this year. Right? So I don't do a lot of those hacks and things to get more people to more people that I don't know to see my stuff. I just try to create stuff for real people that I know that I know is going to help them. Yeah. Don't get fooled by those vanity metrics. You want real engagement and real target audience finding your stuff. So thank you for that question. And thank you for that answer. All right. Kimberly is asking if you write different types of books, do you need websites for each or should you set up a site for yourself as an author, then create pages for each kind of book? Yeah. So I've done this. I've set up a site for, I, well, I think it's helpful to, um, it, first of all, it depends on how much bandwidth you have, right? So if you've got five different books, you got five different websites, that's going to take you a lot of time. If you have the time to do it, cool. Um, I would probably think of it this way, which is create, you know, you probably own the URL for your name already. Um, so I would say create a website on there that brings people that lets people know about all of the books that you have together. And then also when you have a new book coming out, I would probably then create just like a landing page, like a one page website that makes it really clear. So like my website, simple social media book, there's not a whole lot on there. I don't have my blog on there. I, I don't even necessarily like talk about the events that I have coming up or stuff like that. It's really just geared to get people to order the book. That's pretty much it because I don't want them to get lost and do all of the things. I want that to be very, very clear. So if you have the bandwidth for it, I would create one website that points people towards all of your books. And then as a new book comes out, create simple landing pages for those to make it really easy for people to take that one small action. 
Yes, great answer. And thank you for that question, Kimberly. All right, Christopher is asking, I found an email list of 800 emails that will receive reactions from 25% or less. What are techniques to reach the 600 emails who don't respond to emails on my offers? Okay, yeah. So one thing is if people aren't opening your emails, there's only um, a few indicators for that, right? Because they don't even know what's in your email if they're not even opening them. So it sounds like that's the issue that you're having is that they're not even opening them. So it means that one, they may not necessarily trust who you are. They may not really know who the sender is. So for example, if you're always sending emails from your company name or or something like that, then maybe you want to just send it from your actual name because you're a, a real person and people usually respond a little bit better to people. Um, so that's one thing. Two is to try to um, improve your subject lines to really entice people to open them and, and get them to know what's like sort of what's in it for them to open it up. Um, and then also your preview text. A lot of times what will happen is when you write an email campaign, the preview text is like the first sentence or two that's actually in your email itself. But a lot of times it's like, click here to unsubscribe or, you know, view in your web browser. Well, that's not really very enticing. You can actually make that information a little bit more uh, enticing for people to open. So I would say if those are the, if people aren't opening your emails, start there with those three elements first. Yeah, and that actually kind of comes to a question I wanted to ask just about reviewing data. I mean, how often do you look at the data from your email sends and your social media campaigns and sort of rework your framework or your approach? So I like to, um, I have just a few key, met all right. So I have a, this isn't cool, everybody, <laughs> but it's true. Every Monday, I have what I call my Monday morning meeting with myself. <laughs> and... <laughs> I gave it a snappy name, just like you should do for the, your freebies. And, uh, but yeah, but I just go through what, um, I go through a few metrics, but not many. So I basically like to see, um, as far as emails are concerned, are people um, subscribing or are they unsubscribing? What are those numbers at? Um, I usually don't look at if people are opening or close, you know, if opening or closing, if people are opening them or clicking um, until I'm making the next email. So that's, that's usually, I'll just be like, okay, how did that work the last time? How does it work on average? Um, but I try not to get too much in the weeds because there's so many different analytics that you can look at all the time. So I just want to make sure that people are actually connecting with, with what I'm putting out enough so that they're actually subscribing in the first place. Mm -hmm. I love that Monday morning meetings with myself or mm, for sure. It, yeah. <laughs> very, very good. Good. Tip. <laughs> All right. And so I will do a last call for questions. Drop them in the chat. If you have any, um, I do have one more question for you, Annie, when you are getting ready for your book launch, you're building up your email list. How early is too early to tell people you've done a thing and your book is coming out? So I would, I don't usually like to tell people about the thing until there is a way that I can collect their interest. So I like to make sure that I have like the website up or the landing page to at least say, if you're interested, go here. I will let you know when pre-orders are available. I will let you know when the book is coming out. It's not ready yet. Um, so, but I don't do that unless I have a way for people to give me their information. Cause otherwise it's just sort of talking. Yeah. I think that's a great point. I thought that you were just like six months out, but yeah, until you can make it actionable and you're getting something from these emails, then why waste your time and take up that space? Um, yes. Well, Annie, thank you so much for, for being here. Um, I don't see any other questions in the chat. I will give you one more chance, but that's pretty much it. So I see a couple like, so Jeff is asking what is MailChimp? Oh, Jeff? yes. Mail is Mailchimp is just one. So you can't really send out a lot of emails to people from your own personal email account. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that you're sending it out from some kind of a third party that's kind of equipped to be able to send out hundreds and hundreds or thousands of emails at a time. So there's a bunch of different platforms that you can use to make that happen. ConvertKit was one of the ones that I mentioned. 
Um, Mark has mentioned Beehive, which I know that a lot of people use and like because it's very user friendly. I use MailChimp. Some people like Constant Contact. That's another one that comes up a bunch. So any of those are ways that you can collect email addresses and then send out correspondence, send out campaigns to them. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Thank you for those questions and thank you for that information. Um, Annie, what, uh, if anything, would you like to leave us with as we are winding down? Well, I think it's really important to just think about much like when you write a book, what is the thing that you can do now that will work for you later on before you get caught up doing the, because there's always going to be more content that you can make. There's always going to be more that you can do. So you really just want to prioritize what is the important stuff that you want to uh, that you want to do first, so that way that's already going and in the background while you're working on the other stuff. And you could go to my website downstage.media. I have a lot on my blog about this topic, about having those foundational pieces of your marketing in place, the automation parts of it, and then the ongoing nurturing parts. So I talk about this a lot, but if you go to downstage.media, you'll be able to find all of that, plus how you can fill out the assessment to get your marketing report. Perfect. Thank you. I am just going to pull up the Downstage Media website, and I did see one other question that came through, so we'll grab that. Christopher is asking, what do you prefer, an email notice or an email newsletter? I don't know what an email notice is. I'm thinking that it may just be your regular email, like a promo email or something like that versus maybe something more content. Oh, like got it. Episode. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. 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 So, um, so I like, I like doing a mix of both. So usually what, what we'll oftentimes do with our clients is we'll have like one email that is really targeted to just do like one specific thing, which is just, hey, it's Women's History Month. We're having a promo for all of our, oh, like Lulu has right now. Like we're doing a promo for all of our authors uh, who are women. So go here. I, I may have I may have these details wrong, but basically like, you know, so you'll send a one email that's very, very targeted that has that goal to actually bring in sales. And then you also want to have another one that comes out that's just a little bit, I mean, maybe it's got a little bit of promotional stuff in there, but maybe you're also pointing them towards an, an article or a blog post or a podcast that you've published or just a general nugget of information. Uh, maybe you'll ask them an engaging question and then put something random. If you've noticed, those are all, they all spell out pager, which is what you could get in the pager zine. So, uh, so that's the idea. So we use the pager method all the time, including in emails. And so you want to send at least one of each of those a month. Mm -hmm. Um, but you could get more, uh, you know, you could send out more if you need to, but that's a good starting off point. Perfect. All right. Well, I dropped in, uh, oh, uh, Lynn or Arlen, if you want to see any of the Lulu promos and Annie is not a paid spokesperson, but I appreciate no. like, letting Sorry. us know. But you can follow us on Twitter or Facebook. We're always posting our promos there. You can also sign up for our newsletter. As Andy mentioned, we try to make it easy. We advertise it all over our site and our blog posts and at the footer of our website. So sign up for our email list. It was a good thanks, Annie, for that uh, alley-oop yeah. to uh, get people to sign up for Lulu's email list. All right. Well, I think that we got through all the questions. Thank you very much. I did drop links to downstage.media and Al uh, Annie's book. So definitely grab a copy today and get your social media plan in line. Um, and Annie, thank you so much for being here. Are there any, any other places where people should find you or follow you uh, or anything else they should know before we let you go? Uh, head to downstage.media. That'll, that'll take you everywhere you need to be. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for being with us today. I hope that you have a wonderful Wednesday wherever you are. Good luck with your email marketing and your social media marketing, and we will see you next time. Thanks again, Annie. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody.